It's Coach Mo here for a dynamic Tuesday. It's Motivational Monday times two for Tuesday. This week, I am covering the topic of why women are still not ahead. What is it for us women that is continuing to cause a slowdown, a cramping, a stuckness in our power and pay? relative, of course, to men in this world. It's not a new topic. Of course, it's not a new topic. It's just a topic that has not gotten resolved. So as a career coach, uh, mostly for professional women, helping them up level their careers and bring their soul to work so they can land their dream job, I have found a few major themes in the women I talk to on my career clarity calls. If you've been following my work or if you're brand new, um, my coaching work only fits a certain type of women who really needs to up level her career. And that type of women is a professional woman who is just not where she knows that she could be. And that is underemployed, unemployed, underpaid, toxic work environment, wrong fit, stuck for years, not advancing. If you have not advanced your compensation and your career trajectory 30 to 50% over the last three to five years, something is going wrong with your career. So it's important that you understand what's going on. And I've got some nuggets for the women out there. And I'm doing this special series specifically because I want to help women understand what's really going on in the power gap. And that also portrays to the pay gap. So the power and pay gap are intertwined. And what happens, and this theme I'm talking about today is this life work balance equation is something that women think they have to have an either or negotiation with themselves in order to live the life that they want. And I'm here to tell you a few things about this life balance uh, dilemma it's not ever solved. Just like brushing your teeth is never solved, eating is never solved, making your bed is never solved. So many things in life are just this ongoing theme of keep doing it and do it differently, do it better, keep doing it every day. Certain things are just that way and there's not really a balance. There's not really a balance on whether your teeth are clean or dirty or whether your bed is made or not, well, maybe that's true. Whether you've eaten the, the foods for the day or not, it's like an ongoing thing. So you're gonna get yourselves at some point where your work might predominate and you're gonna get yourself sometimes where life might predominate. But all in all, it's a holistic picture of who you are and what you want out of your life. And I'm really, really happy to have you guys here today. Just feel free to say hello to me. Um, give me your full name in the quote, uh, in the comment, I mean, uh, if you're catching me live today. Um, we're broadcasting in this special closed group on Facebook so I can have more dialogue with you. So I'd like you to let me know who you are and uh, what type of comment you might have about work-life balance. Not really a real thing to have total work-life balance. But what I say to you is there's a few themes that are going on that are causing you to feel out of sync. I'm going to cover those today. And I want to dive right in because if you're like most women, time is precious. But I don't want you to think about how time, you don't have enough time for things. You don't have time to do all the things you want to do because so many women are living in scarcity mindset. Write that one down and underline it scarcity mindset tends to dominate a lot of women's mindsets, family, work, partner, husband, family uh, of origin, sisters, brothers, mothers, parents, um, friends, obligations, grocery shopping, soccer games. So it's really easy for our linear brain to get focused on the scarcity of time. Here's the thing. Every single human being on this planet earth gets a hundred and 68 hours a week. And how you spend that and what you spend that time on is 100% up to your choices. 
here's the problem, ladies. You're not making decisions about those choices. Other people are, and you're letting them. So it's just like if you have 168 $1 bills in your pocket and people keep coming by and throwing them out one at a time, boom, boom, I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that. And then you're left with like what? Hardly anything. So you throw work in there. Let's just round it off to eight hours a day, five days a week, that's 40. Let's throw sleep in there, that's six hours. Six to eight times seven days, that's between 56 and 42 hours, let's call it 50, 50 hours of sleep, 40 hours of work, that's 90. Now you're left with 78 hours to take care of things. So there's a finite amount of time. Oh, I hope I didn't go off. And so what you have to do in your life is you have to figure out what you want to do with that. There we go, back online. I don't know what just happened there. So you have to figure out what you want to do with that amount of time that you have remaining for your week outside of work and sleep. Because those are sort of fixed components. And so again, I'm giving that like, what did I just do the math on? That's like 90 uh, some hours a week out of the 168. So now you have 78 hours divided by seven. Really, 10 hours a day? Did I do that math right? Um, 168 hours a week for you to do what you want to do. Again, women have a problem with other people dictating where their time is going and what they're doing with their time. When you get in charge of that, when you get in front of that, you're going to have less time scarcity and you're going to feel more in control. But here's the problem. From a wee little age, we are giving our power to everyone. Or as a matter of fact, we're taught to do that. Let Johnny play with your toy. Let Sally do that. Don't feel bad. Don't feel this. Don't feel that. Make sure so-and-so feels okay. Make sure you do that. All of our attention and time and energy, our soul's lifeblood is going out. So what happens by the time you're in your 30s and 40s, 50s and 60s, 70s and 80s is that the amount of energy that you have left in your reservoir is pretty depleted. And what you've gotten in the habit of doing is checking with others to make decisions. Let me check with them. Let me do that. Let me check in, check in, check in. So for some strange reason, and we can dive into this, and I'd love comments about what you guys think is going on here. I have my own uh, analysis on this, but as women, we have been giving our power away for decades of our lives and centuries and millennia in human timelines. So because we've been giving our power away, we're not making our own decisions and therefore we're not in charge of our own time. We have to work. We have to sleep. We have to grocery shop. Uh, many women on this planet are cooking dinner, not all, granted, as I made a disclaimer in yesterday's uh, episode, I'm going to be making some broad generalizations in order to make my point. What I notice with the women I work with and, and especially the women I talk to on the clarity calls is that they don't make their own decisions for what they want in their career and in their lives. So what inevitably happens is that you don't have the career and the life that you want because you're so busy, concerned with what other people want from you, whether they like you, whether they're going to agree with you. And so all of your energy is out here dancing around, hoping that the external people are going to be okay while you're progressing your career, your decisions, what you're making for dinner. And then if they don't, price to pay. So what happens is that you stay in jobs too long and get totally burnt out and blame the job. You stay underpaid too long. And then you wake up one day and you go, wait a minute. I talked to so many women. If I added it up during the week, I should do this one week. 
If I added up the amount of wages that women have lost, have, have flushed away because of their indecision, their inability to make a change, I'm sure it's millions of dollars a week in the difference. I talk to so many women who are overeducated and underemployed. They're literally throwing away 30 and 50 and 60 and $70 a year because they refuse to take charge and take control of their careers because all their lives, their decisions were taken away from them. And so many women on this planet, God's green, beautiful earth, don't know how to get that back. That's why you don't have family life balance is because you're so concerned about the decisions that you make being based on what other people want of you and whether they'll like you or love you or whatever they'll give to you. And you don't even know that you're thinking that, but that's how you've been conditioned by all the people who raised you and they loved you. I know they did. They tried. They really did. But what they were taught about how to raise little girls is to give little girls no power and to make little girls cater to everyone else and the whims and desires of others. And we don't have to rehash the Me Too movement to understand how precarious that has put women in corporate America and in compromising positions relative to powerful men. And I'm not even talking about that today. I'm talking about the subtle, absolute, dominant, pervasive problem that women have about making decisions for themselves. Independently saying, this is what I want, this is what I'll do, this is what I need, this is what I won't tolerate, and to actually stand in that power and be able to make a decision of no, this job's not good enough. I'm going to go out and get a new one. No, you're not going to pay me that. No, you're not going to have me do Bill Jones' job on top of mine and not pay me anything more. No. Women have not wrestled the power of yes and no based on their own personal desires, needs, wants, alignment. And what happens is that your life now is not yours. So of course you don't have work-life balance because you've spent your entire life trying to please everyone and trying to be perfect. And I see this every single day and I gotta tell you, it's the thing that breaks my heart. Every single day, I'm talking to a woman whose career has been a shit storm and they have great a great personality impeccable credentials, have worked their asses off, and they're here with their wages where they should be up here. And yet they won't take control. And at this point, what happens if you've done that long enough, what happens is that you now have conditioning that says, I'm not worth it. I don't know how to. I can't put myself out there. What if they'll see? I really don't know what I'm doing. Imposter syndrome prevails. Perfectionism. You can't get out of your own freaking way. And you know what? If you're getting a little sense that I'm angry and frustrated with this, you bet I am. I am so freaking frustrated for the women who are stuck in jobs that they don't deserve, that they're putting up with, and they're working their butts off to try to make ends meet. And meanwhile, if they could change, they would change their lives and their careers forever. But you see, once you're stuck in that rut of not being able to make a decision for yourself and not owning your power, you can't possibly get out of it. It's like expecting someone who's chained to the wall to walk 10 miles forward. You're chained to the wall by your conditioning and by what you have chosen to continue to put up with. And then after a while, your entire self-worth is eroded such to like a nibble it's down so low that even as good a coach as I am, I may have a hard time resuscitating you. And there's so many women who we have worked with and we spend a lot of time resuscitating their souls because that's what's necessary. Your resume is not gonna be what it needs to be. And you cannot interview 
or show up at a job the way that you really want to and need to and deserve to unless your soul is brought back to life and you are losing your life work balance because it's all part of the same equation. If you're not standing in your power and making decisions for you, you don't have work life balance. Your life will never feel good and you'll always feel out of whack and stuck and frustrated. And what's going to happen? There's a few things that are going to happen. You know what they are? I talked about them. I talked about one of those issues yesterday. One thing that happens is that you freaking blow your top at some point and then you make a critical mistake about yelling, screaming, blowing your top, talking to someone in a way that you shouldn't have, and then you can't return to work. You don't want to, or you're written up and out you go. That's one thing that happens. Another thing that happens, bright woman, educated, master's degree. She should be making 120 at a minimum. She's making 70 something. She walked out on her job on Friday, walked out, no job, no strategy. She was just sick and tired of being pushed around. See, women are emotional, aren't they? Because what happens is that you don't have control over who you are and how you are, and you haven't made a decision soon enough that by the time you do, you're emotionally overloaded and you make a stupid decision. And I'm just calling it as it is. Because if you walk out on a job, okay, you should be making 50,000 more, but you're not, because you've decided whatever decisions you made in your career, you've baked that in for yourself. So you're now, at like a $50,000 gap because of your own indecision. And now you walk out on that job with no plan. No, it's called suicide. And you think you're freeing yourself up from something? No, you have just freaking nailed the coffin. And if I'm speaking to you, you need to freaking book a clarity call and let's get it taken care of. That woman who walked out of a $73,000 job. If I charge $73,000 for my workshop, which I don't, it'd still be cheaper than the decision she just made. Walking out on a well-paying job. You don't do that. Please hear me. I've talked about this before. I've written about this before. You cannot make decisions like that and think that you're even close to being successful. That is not what successful people do. That is definitely not what $100,000, $200,000 professional executive people do. So ladies, you've got a few problems that have been baked into your conditioning and they're showing up in your careers and I see them all the time. And I want to alert you as to this problem being a big freaking deal. It's the reason why we put up with sexual harassment. It's the reason why we put up with toxic bully bosses. It's the reason why we put up with being paid $50,000 less because we're not making our own decisions. You have got to get in the driver's seat of who you are and what you want in your life and freaking make decisions for yourself that are powerful and moving yourself in the right direction. So that woman who walked out on her job on Friday, she's saying, I made my decision for myself, Mo, but it's a dumb decision. You just flushed a career and a paycheck down the toilet. It's tough to recover from that. I don't know if you did any research, I don't know if you did any thought about that. I don't know if you did any strategy about what's next after that. Don't make a chess move when you don't know the move after that. Don't do that. That's not smart. Don't put a bad mark on women being emotional because you haven't figured out how to be in charge of your decision making because you wait too long and then you do something that is emotional and foolish and disempowering and it's ah uh, burning me up. Uh, I'm feeling positive instead of walking out because of mindset training. I am not steering my life. I am not steering my life now. Yeah. You've got to steer your life. You absolutely must. But here's the thing. You probably need professional help to get you in the driver's seat.
because that driver's license to drive that car, to be in charge, to be in control, most women don't get that. Most women get, oh, let someone else drive. Oh, sit in the back seat. That's okay. You're going to at least get there. Oh, take twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 less and, you know, maybe we'll pay you if we, if we think about it. Oh, we'll pay you less for six months and then we'll figure out what, what's, what we're going to do then. Don't put up with less than you deserve. And don't walk out on it. Stand up and ask. So your work-life balance problem is all at this root. This is the root of your work-life balance problem. Years ago, I worked with a wonderful woman, fantastic professional. She was excellent at what she did. As a matter of fact, she was so excellent at what she did, I kept giving her promotions and more money and more promotion and more money because I really saw what she was capable of. And she was a great leader, a great manager. She was smart. She was pretty much even tempered when she, until she wasn't. And when she wasn't even tempered is when she let things get to her and let people get to her and didn't pull the trigger on something. So one day I was asking her um, how she was doing and why she worked such late hours. And she's like, well, I've always done it this way. And, you know, people uh, always like count on me to be here a little bit later, et cetera. I said, well, you know, there's cell phones. If you need to do something, people could just call you. She had a son who was really a big baseball player and very good at it. He eventually got a college scholarship and um, she wanted to go to more of his baseball games, but she felt guilty leaving work. Notice I said she probably did feel guilty not going to his games, but she felt guilty leaving work. Priority of work, I got to prove myself. I don't want to be disliked. I don't want to let people down. Meanwhile, she's not showing up for her son. A lot of this is going on out there, okay? She's not the only one. And I said to her, please leave. Please leave at 5.05 or 4.55 or whatever time you need to leave to get to your son's baseball game. And you know what? We should be taking care of business before that point. But if we need you, how about answer your cell phone rather than stay in the office? So is that work-life balance? Absolutely. So she's getting to see her son play baseball. She's being responsive as she needs. And she's not killing herself by thinking she's chained to her desk to prove her worth. Because that was really what was going on. She was feeling she needed to prove her worth and prove that she was a good stand-up gal by staying in the office longer for everyone else, sacrificing her own needs. As her leader, I gave her permission to go to her son's baseball games. Guess what? She got better at her job. Yep. Yep. She got better at her job. I gave her more responsibility and more money. Soon she was at a vice president level. She would have never imagined herself at that level. But here's what happens when we empower someone to take care of what's important and we allow people to make decisions that feel good for themselves. They now can make decisions better and better. That's a muscle that really feels good. And once it's exercised, it can get leveraged in the marketplace. So if you're a leader, please empower your female workers to do things like this. Probably your male workers don't have this problem. I'm just going to bet that's the case because men have been raised and trained to make decisions for themselves, pull the trigger, not accept things that they don't want, not accept being paid less. Men slash boys have largely been conditioned and raised to get stuff done, take care of themselves, only accept what they want, what feels good, et cetera. Totally opposite. Women have to take a page out of how men were raised and do more for themselves. And actually we all win because when women make decisions for themselves, it's always in the context of everyone else anyway. But if you're making the decision for other people and you're sacrificing the self, you have resentment and frustration and guilt and shame driving your life and that's going to come out as an emotional response to someone and you're going to do something emotional, stupid, dumb, financially stupid, etc. And I don't want you to do that. That's really bad. So let's see what we got as comments again. It was emotional, but I turned it to a positive, completed my bachelor's degree. Okay, rock on. Way to go. Love it. Excellent. So when you completed your bachelor's degree, did you find another job, leverage that, get more money, 
do something more with it? Please say you did. Please, ladies, don't get more degrees or certificates and do nothing with them. That's not what you're doing. If you're in a job and you get a bachelor's degree to stay in that job, I hope someone told you that they put a gun to your head and said you have to do that. If you're not advancing after putting more into yourself, what's up with that? If you invest more in yourself, whether that be with my workshop, because believe me, we're pushing our ladies to take it up a few notches. If you work with me, you're going to be advancing yourself first inside and then outside. My commitment to the clients who I work with in my work in my workshop is to advance them 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 on the first move. Now, some of my ladies are unemployed when they come to us. I just want to get them back to the level where they were at. If I can get them slightly ahead, which I've done the last couple of months, and I say I, I have a team of beautiful coaches who work with me to get our clients these results in our workshop. Our 12-week workshop moves women from basically crushed souls and injured careers, bring the soul back, and absolutely lay out a strategy to get that new job. But here's what's going to happen. On your way to that new, better job, that higher version of who you are, your gremlins are going to come and want to feast on your freaking brain and your soul and your heart. They're going to want to eat you a freaking alive. And while they're doing that, you're going to decide, oh, no, it's too painful. I don't want to do that. If I go for that level of a job, I won't have any work-life balance because everyone I know who has a higher level job can't have a work-life balance and they're miserable and depleted. Okay, thank you for your data point. I'd like to show you hundreds of people who aren't. Don't convince yourself that a better job and a better career means taking from your family because it is exactly the opposite. You choose how much time you're going to overwork and over dedicate to your company, to your job, to your, to your business. You decide that. But Mo, my company has everyone working over da da da. Change companies. Hello? <laughs> You're not a slave to a company, a job, a boss. You're not. Uh, if you're in the United States of America, and if you're listening to this Facebook Live, I'm guaranteeing you, you're in a place where you can economically make choices for yourself. Do that. Yeah, but I'll never work for a company that will pay my dental insurance. I'll never work for a company where I can like work from home on Fridays. Oh, really? Not true. So whatever you're, oh, I'll never find, or this will never, not true. Take it from me. I help hundreds of women every year get into next level, higher professional jobs. And they understand that they are creating what that is. But if you don't have your soul right, if you're not in your own power, it's not going to happen. If you're not in your power, you're not going to land a great job. You might land a better job, but you're absolutely not going to land the job that works for you, that you're going to be able to be in charge. You've got to get your soul right. And the only way for you to make decisions for yourself, your family, and to totally be in charge of who you are and what you want in your world is to get your soul vibing at a high level. So you are in charge of you and you have everything that you need to press forward for yourself. Thank you, Mo. Your mindset training is helping me. I'm looking forward to steer my career instead of being at the mercy of others. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, I don't feel pressed to walk away. Exactly. I could not imagine myself at a high level position for years. I am not confident in my ability to do them. I am ready to up level up level. Indeed. When we say we can't imagine ourselves in a higher level position, there's probably a few things going on and this equates to the, to the work life balance equation for today's uh, topic. And that is that you either have poor role models or you were raised in a family where that was not a thing that you saw, or you're on the treadmill of working hard to prove your worth and you can't imagine any more harder work that you could possibly do to earn that next level of money. See, your brain may be having this math equation that just doesn't work. If you're making $100,000 right now working 50 hours a week, okay, you're not going to have to work 100 hours a week to make 200000 That doesn't exist. 
Now, are there people who do that? Of course. Are there people who smoke cigarettes and shoot heroin? Yeah. I wouldn't advise you to do that either. I wouldn't advise you to work harder to prove a higher level job worthiness. What I'm going to advise you is to build yourself up internally to feel freaking awesome so that when you get to 200K, you own it. That's what it is. If you're playing at 200K, you're not working your ass off to prove your worth because that doesn't work. And if you've hung out with people making 200, 300, 400, 500K, they're not stressed out because their confidence level isn't consistent with that kind of bullshit. Now, are there some people there? Of course. Was I stressed out as an executive some days? Yeah. When I had to go to budget meetings or my boss had something that totally complicated me and I didn't know and I was caught up in a lot of client issues. And yeah, there were days like that. But in general, you're in the freaking driver's seat. The higher up you go, the more money you make, you're in more control over your career and your life. So if you stay down here, ain't happening. You got to rise up. And you can't rise up unless you get yourself risen up. You've got to resurrect the better part of you, which is your soul. And you've got to elevate who you are inside in order to elevate your career. Your work-life balance is going to be off balance if you are off balance. That's the way it goes. That is the end of the story of the myth of work-life balance. If your life is not feeling like you have the wholeness of all that you want, it's because you're off balance, probably compressing the light of inside of you. And so you have to work hard and blame other people in order to justify how you feel. Um, let's take a look at comments again. Uh, la, 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 la. Thank you, Mo. Your mindset training is helping me look forward to steer my career instead of being in the nursery. But yes, right on. Um, Barbara Havasta, um, someone's looking for you. Uh, you need to come to this conversation, sounds like. Uh, this is such an important topic for single women in the past time and time again. I was asked to stay later given the territory that was the furthest away because I didn't have the same personal commitments as my colleagues. And so, see, here's the thing. Women will take it because they think they have to. A man won't take that maybe for a short period of time until he finds the next best thing. So, and sometimes that's actually a necessary strategic step. So if turning it down means that you would lose favor and whatever, like take a short, take a short term. Yes. You know, it's short term. You don't have to tell them it's a short term thing. Take a yes on something that's a short term problem and then freaking get in control and do something that you want to do and get a better job and totally claim it. Don't take a yes and go, oh, I guess I have to take this. This is what my life's going to be. I'm working here. No, but you know what, ladies, you're taking the bullshit and you're allowing that to happen to you. Own up to it. Put your big girl pants on and be responsible for this. You have to own your decisions. No more asking for permission. No more checking with the committee. No more figuring out who you're going to piss off and is that going to be okay? Make your own freaking decision. But I'm telling you something. You're not doing that because you don't have the power inside of you built up. It's been depleted, smashed down, taken away from you and thrown out. So you can't possibly do that. So you're left to be making decisions based on everyone else. Does this look like your life? If that looks like your life, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I want you to freaking get in control of your life and own your work-life balance. You are too precious of a human being to be jerked around any longer by employers, bosses, organizations, your husband, your kids, etc. Yeah, here's someone. I always felt I needed to seek approval because I did not believe in my soul. No more. We have choices for our own. Absolutely. Your destiny is only yours to claim. No one else. There's no husband, parent, kid, boss, co-worker or friend who is going to claim your destiny for you, with you, or help you. You are on your own. Mm. Put that in your pipe and own it. You're on your own. You know what? I've had a busy life for several decades. Raising two kids, 
working in executive positions, both of us working high level jobs. Was our life perfect and home at 502? No, we were busy, had stuff done. Did we miss out on some of the teenage stuff and have some crises and things like that? Absolutely. But here's the thing. I wanted a busy, active, full life. That's what I wanted. I wanted to play at the highest levels. I wanted to have the biggest impact. I wanted to be able to afford the things I wanted. That's what I wanted. And you know what? Our kids are picking up how we act in the world. That's what they're picking up. So if you're out working and you act like an ass at home, they're picking that up. If you're out working and you come home satisfied and happy and, hey, I totally rocked it. I got this accomplished today. If you're coming home that way, your kids are picking up on that. You're, they're picking up on contribution and work is sweet and it's fun and it takes us on great vacations. That's how I want you to show up for yourself and your family. That's the it. That's it. Okay. Not stressed out, depleted, victimized, and everyone else in charge of you. No, 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 no. Work-life balance. Really get this right because it comes from your soul. Truth bomb, higher up you go, the more control you have. Absolutely. And I tell my clients this all the time. You'll see me talk about it all the time on Facebook Lives. It is one of the biggest myths out there. As a matter of fact, years ago, uh, five years to be exact, um, I was at a Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within, kind of a little plug for Tony. Um, he's got great events, three, four days, but here's the problem. You unearth all this stuff for three to four days, and now what do you do with it? That's why I have a 12-week program because we're unearthing the stuff too, but we're working with you over time to help you get those skills nailed in, locked in, and absolutely own the power of who you are, not just unearth the shit. And then you're like, oh my God. Anyway, um, Melissa Etheridge was at this Unleash the Power Within in San Jose, June, end of June, July, 2014. You can look it up because Tony actually did a video on this uh, promo video. So he's talking about beliefs and we all have beliefs and beliefs control exactly what we do in our life. So her belief was if I'm more successful, I'm taking away from my family. Oh, typical woman, right? And he says, um, so anything that we do could possibly take away from something else, but couldn't it be a belief that your success actually adds to your family. They see you happy. You have more money. You have more freedom. You have more ability to nurture them and do things for them and, and have the life that they want. And so she got a massive belief shift. Melissa Etheridge, multi-million dollar platinum rock star singer, songwriter. Even she was believing this work-life balance bullshit myth because she was buying into it you see this? It's what you buy into. It's your belief system. I'm so passionate about this topic. As you can tell, I could probably rant and rave for hours about this. The bottom line is I have some very specific things I want you to take away from this. Number one, you're in charge of your life. Number two, you're in charge of the decisions you make on life, family activities, and where you spend your 168 hours per week. You're in charge, not your husband, not your kids, not your parents, not your boss. You are in charge of your 168 hours per week. Everyone gets them. You spend it how you want. Another point, your soul is depleted if you are letting other people make the decisions for you and if you are staying in situations, whether that be family or career, that are depleting you and pulling you down. If you are underpaid, You've got a big problem. It's like having cancer of your career and you have got to fix it. And the only one to fix it is you making a decision that you've got to fix it. Now I'm the doctor in the house and I can help you fix it. And we do a great job over 12 weeks, getting you up leveled, new job. Boom. Boom. <laughs> if you are underpaid, and stuck in a job that is absolutely not serving you, you've got a freaking disease and you need to cure it and fix it and do something. And unless you show up for the cure, you're going to stay diseased. I don't care how great your resume looks 
or how great your LinkedIn profile is. If you're vibing down here and this is where you need to, should be hanging out career wise, you're never going to get here. If you're hanging out here on a vibrational scale, it's not possible. There are certain inevitable laws of the universe. And one of them is that your vibrational status is going to equal your life. So you've got to increase your vibrational status to be paid at a higher level. You can't just want it. And I talk to women all the time and I know this to be absolutely true. And you know what? After our clarity call, they know it's true also, because if you're hanging out at a low level or lower than you should be, and you're trying to interview for higher level positions, you might be getting the interviews because your resume looks pretty decent but you're not getting called in. You're not advancing and you're not getting the jobs. It's almost impossible for someone to make that 20 to 50 K pay gap leap until you bring your soul's vibration up and you can command the confidence, the clarity and the power in who you are to hang out at that level. And that's why we have such great success because we build you back up from the inside and take you there. Now we can't do anything about your education, your expertise and your experience. You have to have that. But so many women we talk to have that in spades. They're just flushing it down the toilet every single day. Let's do a little bit of math before we wrap this up. Your work life balance is costing you money. If you don't have the life that you want because you're stuck in a career that sucks, that pays you too less, or it's a toxic work environment, or like the woman yesterday, she walked out on a decent job. Wasn't great. Wasn't where she should be, but she freaking walked out. So like, let's do some math on that. Let's just pretend she was making 75,000 and where she really should be is really at 120. She's got impeccable, impeccable credentials, great work history and expertise. So 75 to 120, that's $45,000. $45,000 is about four grand a month. 3,800 if you want to really do the real math. Per month, flush, 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 flush. You know what she told me yesterday? She wanted to prove them wrong, that she could succeed and stay in this low level job. She was gonna prove them. Cause they were actually trying to push her out because she was, when you're in a job that's too small for you, you're going to be a little bit unwieldy for people and they're not going to want you around. So, cause you want, you want to like play a bigger game and you're in this little box. So you're, you're going to be a, like a, a bad fit. So you're going to get pushed out. You're going to get pushed around. You're not going to be wanted. And this is what was happening with this woman. I can, I can predict these things like nobody's business. So, Anyway, so $45,000 a year, flush, 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 because she was too freaking stubborn to step into her own power and claim it and demand it because she's afraid. But she has too much ego to admit that she's afraid. So now her ego and her emotions won the day and she walked out on Friday with no plan, no job. So not only is she flushing $45,000 a year, she's now flushing the entire amount so at 120, divide that by 12 months, it's 10K a month. Okay, that's gross, not net, whatever. But it's a 10K earning. Flush, flush. So before she was flushing 4,000 a month. Now she's flushing 10,000 a month. That's the math, ladies. I was in high level jobs in corporate America. I know how to do math. I know return on investment. I know what this stuff looks like. That's what this is costing you. So if you're like her, hanging out at 75 K and you really should be at 120 because you got a master's degree from a cool school and an undergrad from an even cooler school and you're 42 and your career has been pretty good, but you've been at the pay rate of horrible. That's what, that was this woman's situation. I mean, it drove me nuts. 20 years she's been playing small and now she can't make an investment in herself to up level She'd rather flush $10,000 down the toilet every day. I mean, help me out with this. Ladies, you cannot be living like this. I have no understanding of it. And if you're educated, like there is zero understanding of this. So if you don't have an education or you kind of, 
not really a professional woman, I can understand making decisions that aren't really like that smart financially. I, I can kind of get there, but all of us should be able to do simple math. Divide by 12, whatever your pay is, okay? And divide by 12, whatever you think your pay needs to be or should be. And you do the subtraction of that. So in this case, 75 to 120, 45K flush. I'm going to walk out of this job. I'm going to show them. Now she's flushing 10K. A month. Ah, okay. I've taken a day off today to attend the group coaching to increase my vibration. I'm in. Bam. Happy to do that. That means that you must be one of my clients. <laughs> and I'm happy to have you come into the group coaching tonight so you can increase your vibration. That's what we do. That's how we get results. Ladies, if you're listening to this and you're not a client and I'm talking to you because you know if I'm talking to you. If I'm talking to you and this is your problem, you need to freaking fix it. If you wait any longer, all you're doing is flushing self-esteem. I didn't even mention that part and money down the toilet. Do not do that. You are too valuable of a soul on God's planet to flush your soul and your money down the toilet. The, the problem is that no one has taught you how to solve this, how to correct it, how to bring yourself back up. No one's taught you this. Why? Because they didn't know. And so many of the women I work with, they're more educated than the generation before them. I was blessed with parents who went to college, grandparents who went to college. I saw what success professionally looked like through my parents and through family members, et cetera. It was part of our generational heritage. So I have a leg up because that's how I was raised. So many women I work with, they're the first generation college or first generation master's level or first generation that has an opportunity to make six figures. So I get it that no one's taught you this. I get it that your conditioning being raised wasn't that. I get it. I have a woman who's a significantly high six figure earner and her dad was a coal miner. She didn't get what this big executive powerhouse world looked like as a young girl. She had to make it up on her own. And, you know, she's gotten kind of tossed around a little bit, but she's freaking awesome. And she put together a lot of pieces that were really holding her back and having her feel really awful about herself, even though she was earning at a high level, she was not aligned with her power. Now she is. And now she can make powerful decisions based in her own best interest, rather than running around like an anxiety ridden person trying to prove and, and make everyone feel good. You can't play at a high level. You can't even really play at even a low level. If your life is based on other people, you making other people feel good. Stop doing it right now. Just call it off. Put a moratorium on it. Tell your family, your husband, your coworkers, your boss, that you're not going to run around like a chicken with your head cut off trying to please them. You're not going to make all the dinners and come up with all of the, the menus and do everything at home and do everything at work the same way. Call it off. That's what work-life balance, work-life balance, you know what that really is? It's all about you leading the life that you feel whole and happy to do. That's what work-life balance is. I have work-life balance. I lead the life I want to do. I make decisions based on that. And you know what? The people who I love who are part of my family, they come along with that as well. They do their thing and we meet up and we have whole family happy lives. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty freaking good. And so what do I want to do? I want to keep expanding and keep being more and keep doing more and being a better role model to my kids who are now all adult children, adult children, <laughs> who are all now adults. And with my siblings and everyone who touches my life and my world. That's what I'm claiming. I want you to claim it for yourself too. Okay. Hi, Mo. Glad to be listening in. So good. All right, ladies. And if there's any gentlemen in the house, you get it. If you're a gentleman and this is your problem, okay, you are conditioned the way that most women are. If you're a man in this conversation and you've got a woman who you know in your life, who you love, who's been conditioned this way, bless her and help her out. I've got a lovely husband I met, I met uh, in Chicago when I got together with some of our clients live this past weekend. And he was just gushing about the new woman that his wife is. And he has been happy and enamored with this beautiful new soul who he's married to for 20 years now. 
And you know what? He said to me, Mo, I, I, I kind of drove her crazy because I was raised to have a woman serve me. And he literally meant that. And, and now she's her own person. She's getting trained to do this. And she's a big software engineer. I mean, she's got lots of talents and gifts. And now she's being her whole self rather than donating blood and soul and guts and tears and career to the family. You can do that too. Up level your soul to up level your career and yourself and you will have the work life wholeness that you desire. We don't necessarily need to call it balance because that's a linear equation. You're a whole multidimensional human being. You're gonna have wholeness and wholeness is a constantly evolving ecosystem. And that's what this is all about. You having your work life family ecosystem that you feel great about because you're in charge of it. Rock on. We'll see you tomorrow. What's our topic for tomorrow? I don't know, but it's going to be in the same vein. It's going to be why women are still not ahead. Join in tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, if you're listening to this on podcast or recording. Thanks so much for joining in. And feel free, please, to come visit me, mofall.com. If you need help with your career, let's get it started. It starts with a career clarity call. Because if I can help you, I'll know it by that career clarity call. My team and I are waiting to help resurrect your career and your soul. Let's rock on. See you next time. This is Coach Mo, MoFall.com, and Coach Mo and MoFall everywhere in social media. Let's get you up-leveled. See you next time.